Hey everyone, this is Alex from warnoffkeys.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can create your own status command as well as how to change your bot status to a few different options after every few minutes. Now, real quick, I want to mention that knowing JavaScript is required to follow this video and this entire series. If you don't know JavaScript, don't worry. You can scroll down to the description of this video and at the top, you'll see JavaScript course. There was an hour long crash course here on YouTube, which you can right click and open this in a new tab. So you can watch that after you're done with this video. So I'll be using the one off keys commands command handler within this video. If you're familiar with a different command handler, feel free to use that. And I'll also be using TypeScript within this video, but if you're using JavaScript, you can still follow along. Now, some differences you might notice is with TypeScript, you have to use import statements like this, but with JavaScript, you can use your standard import statements using require like this right here. So go ahead and import things how you will, depending on if you're using JavaScript or TypeScript. Now, I also have a commands folder here, and I'm specifying where that lives by passing in commands directory. I also want to specify where our features directory lives. So I could say features dir is path.join dir name and then features. Now, I can go ahead and create a new folder called features, and this is where a bunch of files will live that will automatically be ran whenever a bot starts up. Now we don't want the set status command to be available to anyone. We only want that to be for the bot developers themselves, such as us. So we can pass in bot owners and here we can pass in our own user ID. So if I go to discord, I can copy my ID. I can paste it in here. And then when we create our command, we can specify that only bot owners should be able to use it. So I can go ahead and save this. And now I'm going to make a new file within the commands directory. I'm going to call this status.ts. And if you're using JavaScript, you would use JS instead. So within here, we're looking to export an empty object. Within JavaScript, that would be module.exports equals an empty object. And within TypeScript, that would be export default empty object. Now, also within TypeScript, we can specify what type of object this is by saying as I command, which is going to be an interface that comes with one off keys commands. Now, if you're using JavaScript, you wouldn't have to import this at all. So within here, I can use control space. And here we have a bunch of options, such as a category and description, which are required. So the category will be configuration. And then the description will be sets the bots status. We now want to specify what arguments are needed. So I can say the minimum number of arguments is one. And then I can say an expected argument string, which will be used if they enter the incorrect amount of arguments, in this case, with no arguments, it'll then tell them to use the correct syntax. So we'll take a look at that in action in a few moments. But for now, let's just specify status because that's the only argument we need. Now, if you're looking to use slash commands, one of keys commands does have that included. But as of the latest version, you will have to specify a Mongo URI to be able to connect to Mongo in order to use slash commands. If you don't have a Mongo server, then you can only use legacy commands as of now. And if you want to learn more about Mongo, I do have an entire playlist, which will be linked in the description down below. So because I am connected to a Mongo server, I can specify slash is both. This will create a legacy command such as exclamation point status, as well as a slash command such as forward slash status. Now I also want to specify test only is true. And I'm only doing this because I'm specifying which guild IDs I want to create my test only commands for. So if you're not passing in your test servers here, then you want to go ahead and ignore this line. And if you also don't have a database or just simply don't want to use slash commands, both of these lines here can be ignored. Now, an important part is specifying owner only as true. This will make it so only users who are inside of this array will be able to use this command. Now, we don't want any server owner to be able to update the status for our bot because obviously that will be displayed to every server that has used our bot. So we only want the bot owners and the bot developers that we specify here to be able to actually run that command. Next, we can specify our callback function, which is the function that will actually be ran whenever someone uses this command. We're given an object and we can just structure a few things such as the client and the text. The client is obviously the client for the bot and the text will be all of the strings attached to it, such as the status argument. So if I head over to the client documentation under properties, we see user, and this is going to give us access to the client user which we can use for a few different things, such as set presence. So here's an example where we can say client.user.setPresence. We can pass in an object with activities as an array. And here is the actual name as well as the status right here. 
So this could be online or idle or do not disturb, things like that. And one important note is within the developer portal, you will have to enable presence intent right here, which is this checkbox on the right. So make sure that is enabled because otherwise this will not work whenever we actually go to write the code. So we're looking to actually write this code right here, but I'm not looking to copy and paste it because if we write it out, we'll have an easier time remembering it. So going back into VS Code, we can say client.user. Make sure you're using user and not users. So no s dot set presence. And you might see this question mark appear here. This is just simple optional chaining to make sure that user actually exists. Now, if having a question mark here does cause a problem for you, you will simply just have to update Node.js. So within here, we could pass in an object and we can add in activities, which is going to be an array of objects. And each object here will have a name. For example, we could just pass in text, which is the actual string that the user provided in the command. And for example, we can also pass in status, which is do not disturb, idle, invisible, or online. I'm going to use do not disturb here because by default, the bot is online. And so this will show a clear change. Now, finally, we should reply to this because I'm using both a slash and a legacy command. All slash commands will expect a response. And within worn off keys commands, we can simply just return status updated or any type of string. And this will be used as a reply to either the message or the interaction, depending on if it's a slash or a legacy command. So after saving this, I can go ahead and open up a new terminal. Then I can run the bot with npm run dev. If you use a different command to run your bot, go ahead and use that. So everything seems to be working. If I go into my Discord server, we see that I am online with no actual status. So if I do exclamation point status, hello world, we now see this on do not disturb playing hello world and also reply with status updated. So I can add in whatever I want, but if I don't add any arguments, it'll then say incorrect usage, please use the command here. And then here, this status is from the actual string we provided right here. So this is one of the reasons why we provided this here. So this is useful, but what if we have a number of different statuses we want to cycle through? Well, that's what I'm going to show you how to do next. So I'm going to go ahead and use control C to stop this process. And within our features, I'm going to make a new file called status-changer.ts. And of course, if you're using JavaScript, you'd use JS instead. So within here, we're looking to export a function. So within JavaScript, that would be module.exports equals a function here. And within here, we're going to have a client parameter. Now within TypeScript, that would be export default client. And then we also have to specify what type of parameter this is within TypeScript, which we can just specify as client and use control space to import this from Discord. And we also want to export a configuration object. So I can say export const config equals an object. And within here, we need to specify two properties, the first of which is called DB name. And this is going to be the database name that should never be changed, even if this feature is renamed. This is so in the future when one off keys commands has the ability to enable or disable certain features, server owners should be able to do that. So in this case, we can specify status underscore changer. And this string here is obviously something that we don't want to display to the users because it doesn't look like a user friendly string. We can then specify display name, which will be sent to the users. We can specify status changer, which obviously looks a lot more readable. Now, if you're using JavaScript, you would do the same exact object, but instead you use module.exports.config equals the object. So I'm going to go ahead and comment that out. And now inside the actual function that we're exporting, we now have access to the client. So we should specify what type of strings we want to cycle through and then set that to the client every so often. So I can say const status options equals an array. I'm going to say hello and then world and then finally test. So we'll simply just cycle through these. And then once we hit the end, we'll go back to the start. I can use let to create a variable called counter to this equal to zero. I'm using let here because of course we want this counter to actually increase and eventually reset back to zero. And then I'm going to create a function that will go ahead and cycle through all these. So const update status equals a function. And we want to initially run this function. So I can say update status here. Now within this, we're looking to use set timeout to go ahead and call this function at a later date. So I can say set timeout. And this takes in two parameters as we see on the pop-up. The first one is the callback, which is the function. The second one is the milliseconds to delay. So for the callback, I can just simply pass in update status again. 
And for milliseconds, every 1,000 of them is one second. So I can say 1,000 times five or times 60 or whatever you want in terms of seconds. I would highly recommend that you only use this every few minutes. So for example, for every three minutes, I could do this. And obviously you could just type out the correct number, but doing this here makes it much easier to just change this three to a five or to a 10 if you want to do that. Now, just for testing, I'm going to choose every five seconds, but I wouldn't suggest doing this for your actual bot. So within this function, we can now update the status for the client user. So we'll use a very similar code to what we did on the command. So client.user, again, without the S, so just client.user, dot set presence. We'll then add in an object with activities being an array. And here we'll have an object where the name will be status options index of counter. Now we'll also set the status to online. And then after all of this, but before the timeout, we want to go ahead and increase counter and then reset it back to zero if we've reached the end of the list. So I can say if plus plus counter is greater than or equal to status options dot length, I could then say counter equals zero. So this plus plus part will first increase it and then use it in the comparison. So we're always incrementing it each time. So after hello, we go to world. And after that, we go to test. And after that, this is actually greater than or equal to the length. So we're resetting back to zero, which happens to be hello. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And I'm going to open up my terminal again. And I'm going to use npm run dev. It says loading one listener. So it actually detected this file. And then going back into Discord, it says playing world, then it says playing test. So this should cycle back to hello, as we see right there. And then in five seconds, it should go back to world, and it'll keep on cycling over and over again. And again, I'm only doing it this fast to test things, just so I can show you. But typically, you don't want to do this that often. So I'll set this back to two minutes. And if I save this, it'll then cycle through each individual status we specified here every two minutes. Thanks for watching the video. If you want access to video source code, as well as early access to future tutorials, consider clicking on the join button down below the video to support the channel.